everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi my name is Jennifer and today is a face full of newness everything is new new to me one item everything else is new to the market so if you're interested in seeing that just stay tuned hi everybody so let's start with pulling my hair back I am in desperate need of a haircut <laughs> but I haven't had time. I haven't had time to get my roots done either, which is a continuing refrain of mine. I just, I feel like I never have time, like enough time to get my roots done. Hopefully I'm not the only one. Uh, so as I said in my intro, today is all newness, like all newness, newness. My eyebrows are still healing from the microblading. Uh, to me, it seems like most of the pigment has like completely faded. So I don't know if I am one of those people <laughs> where the pigment just does not stay or this is normal we're about to find out um and it's only been a week but yeah like most of the pigment is gone so i have an appointment in four weeks something like that so we're gonna when i go back i'm gonna be like yeah it's like gone because <laughs> we're obviously gonna have to do deeper darker or something because it, it at this point a weekend there's not much like I mean it's there but it's it's like it's pretty faded so we'll see I could just be one of those people where pigment doesn't stay like you have to go deeper um that's the reason when you get these things done you you know you never know how your skin is going to react if you've never had um you know tattoos or and I haven't or any kind of um microblading done you just don't know what your skin's gonna do and it seems at this point my skin does not like does not like big wink because it's like disappeared uh okay so what do we have that's new so i have a lot of stuff that's actually new and holiday collections as i've mentioned multiple times are coming in i have already done the Givenchy holiday collection the clay de poe holiday collection i will have up i i know some people have already done videos on those there's, you know, numerous others. I will have some items from holiday collections up on my Patreon page before they're released here. And then we've started to see, you know, groups like the pictures and stuff of all the other ones that are coming out, including like Chanel and uh, Hermes is going to be doing, I don't know if they're calling it a holiday collection, but they'll have things including their nail polishes, et cetera, et cetera. So let's start with what I have in front of me today. So I have the Gucci Cushion Foundation. I have the Dior Blush, the limited edition in 361. I have the Westman Atelier iPods that came out. I have the By Terry Hydra Balm Lip, which I got this one in shade Secret Kiss. So we might do that one. But I also have the, because I decided I, wasn't spending enough money. I don't know. Um, I don't know exactly how this happened. I was online. Choices were made. This is the Christian Louboutin. Um, what is it called? It's like, uh, I can't remember. It's, it'll come to me at one and you're not here. <laughs> when I'm not filming. Um, secret, like gloss or something. I'll put it below because now I can't remember it. I had it with, like in my brain five seconds ago. But this is like the glossy sheer kind of uh, formula, which is new. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know how it happened. Um, anyway, so I have the Armani and I have shown pictures of this on Instagram. And I don't know how much I'm going to use of this today since we have the Dior. So we'll have to see. But this is the Eyes to Kill palette. And I gotta tell you guys, I'm like, I don't even wanna touch it. It's, it's so unique and so pretty. It's not something that I usually would be drawn to because of the way that, we'll talk about it in a little bit, but, but it's so pretty. I feel like I should do a video on it, like just by itself, or at least swatches by themselves. So maybe we'll hold off on doing this one for later. Um, and also I have an illuminating powder that I haven't used before and it's the Chanel Duo de Camellias, Camellias Illuminating Powder Duo. 
And this is not new to the market, but it had been sold out for quite some time and I was waiting for it to come back and it came back so I immediately bought it as soon as it came back. So we have all that. We also have the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate uh, concealer, which I've tried a couple of times, but um, I haven't really gone into any, any detail. So let's go ahead and get started with the foundation and of course the Westman Atelier iPods. We'll get to that too. Um, let's start with the foundation. Let's go from there. So the Gucci foundation, this is the cushion. This is not the bottle of foundation. And I did do a review of the bottle of foundation that came out. I don't even remember where it came out now. And I hated it. It is not too strong a word to say I hated it. Like I hated it. And it just looked terrible on me. The thing is though, I got it really early and it's possible that they reformulated it. They never said that, but it seemed like it showed, it was like on the Gucci site and then it showed up at Sephora and everyone that tried it from Sephora seemed to think it was good or at least liked it. And the people that bought it before it ended up at Sephora primarily didn't, which leads me to believe that maybe that the formulation changed. It could be wrong. Uh, so I wasn't going to pick this this up. However, there were a bunch of people who said this is actually good, this new foundation. So I went to buy it because it was on Selfridges and the actual container of foundation in the shade that I wanted was completely sold out. They did not have it. Like it just didn't even show up anymore. It was just gone. But one day I was shopping on Selfridges for something else and like a weird glitch happened and the refill showed up. So let me show you what the, the refill looks like. Yeah, I know it was very strange. So it's like the pink Gucci, you know, from the um, powder compact. It's like a, like a pale pink and it comes like this. And this is the refill for the compact. The compact itself has kind of like this design on it, but this is the refill. So we're going to try out the refill and see what we think because I feel like if I really love it, hopefully the um, compact will come back and then I can try that out. So let's open this up. Ooh, okay, so there's the sticker thing that came off and it's just a regular, you know, cushion compact foundation um, or it should be. So we'll see how this works. Um, like I said, I'm gonna try it for a while and if I really like it, then I will basically stock the website to try to find the actual compact, which will hopefully come back in stock because there wasn't, wasn't there for very long and the shade sold out pretty fast. Uh, the little sponge that comes with it has the Gucci name on it. Well, the holder has the little Gucci name on it and it's an interesting shape. It actually makes sense. Like you, so you can go like this and to get into corners and all that kind of stuff. So we'll try it. We'll try the little sponge that comes with it. Why not? So I have this in shade three. There were not, whoa, okay. That has more coverage than I thought. Um, there were not a lot of shades, <laughs> which is an understatement. Um, definitely has a scent to it. There were not a lot of shades um, and all the shades looked light, like really light. Now I'm a pale person, but I, you know, looking at those shades, to be honest with you, I, I wouldn't be able to tell what shade I would be. And the only reason I went with three is because my friend Laurel, thank you Laurel, had bought this um, foundation and she said she was a three and we have similar coloring. At least we have bought, I know, similar shades in the past and uh, you know, it's been okay. So this one she said had more of that cool leaning, which it does seem to have and it does seem to work. I'm trying to just be careful around my brows because I still can't, you know, do anything, put makeup on them. 
blah, blah, blah. So, this actually has more coverage than I thought it was going to, which is interesting. And the sponge is actually working pretty well for, you know, a sponge that comes with it. Um, yeah, that's not bad. All right, the shade looks a little light, but let's let it warm up on the skin a little bit. That's the thing, all the shades, all the shades looked light. Like, I didn't see a shade in there that looked, you know, <laughs> that much deeper than this one. Although it's so hard to tell online, that's the problem, you can't really tell. But this is shade three. So if this is shade three, and it's still a little pale on me. You can imagine what 01 and 02 are. But anyway, it definitely is cooler leaning. It's the right, you know, it's not too yellow or anything like that. It actually isn't bad. It's not a bad match. It's just a little pale on my skin, but we'll, we can warm it up either way. But it's actually not a bad match for actual, like what my skin tone is. It's just a, a little pale, but pretty good. It feels really nice. It definitely has a scent. It de and it, it definitely has more coverage than a lot of cushion foundations do. I will say that. I wouldn't say that it's like super coverage, but yeah, it looks nice. It has a nice finish to it. Skin-like. Um, I'm just looking to see Flawless coverage, moisturizing, SPF of 22. Interesting. Okay. All right, it's definitely better than their other foundation when I first tried it. That was terrible. Just awful. So bad. Okay. Um, no, my skin feels, it doesn't feel sticky. It just feels, you know, moisturized and like comfortable. So not bad at all. Shade and Illuminate Tom Ford Concealer. So I have this in shade Silk. A couple things about this uh, concealer. It comes in a lot of shades, like a lot. And I generally don't wear concealer. I am one of those people who feels like a lot of times the concealer just it makes my skin look worse because my skin is dry. My skin has been less dry lately, but still. Um, the Silk shade is a really good shade to match my skin tone. So it's really good for like covering things on my face or if I put it like here on the edges, I think it works really, really well. If you, your, you know, a similar skin tone to mine, and you're looking for something to brighten, something lighter, or even something that has a little bit more yellow. Um, or I should say yellow, but like counteract, like the pink. This is not it. This blends really well. And I have to say, it really does. It blends seamlessly into my skin. You can't even see it. Like it doesn't settle on the lines at all. It doesn't even look like there's concealer there, which is imp which is impressive. Uh, so the skin, the, the the shade matches like perfect. It literally matches my skin tone, like almost exactly. But it doesn't brighten up the under eye because it's not like a lighter shade. So if you're looking for something a little bit lighter, and like I said, you're my skin tone. Silk is not going to be it because it's literally a match for my skin tone. But I actually like that and I think it looks really, really good. I have to say, I've only used it a couple of times, but it's odd because it, it blends so seamlessly into my skin. <laughs> it's almost like I can't tell that I'm wearing concealer which is what it's supposed to do. But at the same time, I'm like, did it conceal anything? But it does. Do you know what I mean? Like, cause I can't tell where it, where it is. Um, anyway, 
I do really like it. It's incredibly smooth. It's it it feels very comfortable. And I might actually buy one that's a little bit lighter. I don't know if I want to do that or not because I have brighteners. I mentioned this before. I have like the pens that brighten up the eye, the E. Saint Laurent one, the Sisley one. Uh, I think I have a Chantecaille one, you know, so I have brighteners. So I think this is, this is like the exact match and what I would want. But again, I want to mention it because I really do like it. And I think it's good for like, if I want to just put a little bit on the face too, like to cover up some things, I think it blends really, really well. Uh, it doesn't counteract redness like the green one from Chanel does. I also have the Chanel concealer that was reformulated. And so I'm going to be doing some more comparisons with the two of them to figure out which one I like better. I think I like the Tom Ford one better, but it's too early to say, so. Uh, okay, so we're gonna get into the blush in just a second. One thing I wanna mention. So I picked up the Suku blush from the collection that came out, is it the fall collection? I don't even remember. 129, and this was, you know, a, a little bit harder to get, 129 and 128 that came out, but they were impossible to get. Um, they were available on a couple of different sites, including Selfridges and I think Cult Beauty and some other things. The sheer matte lipsticks in the limited edition shades did sell out and I haven't seen them come back. And I think the eye quad might have sold out. I don't really remember at this point. But anyway, 129 was the cooler of the two blushes. I had picked up the warmer and so I'll, I'll show you on my hand. It is very, very light on me. And I'm going to use it today as more of like a contour, which is actually why I picked it up. I think on me, it will work well as a contour shade, but we're going to, we're going to see because I don't have anything like that from Suku. I have blushes, many, many blushes, but I really don't have anything from Suku that works as a bronzer or a contour or bronze tour. I don't really know if that's a word. But anyway, um, it's not a word, but you know what I mean. Um, so we're going to try it. We're going to see how this works. So I'm going to take the Sonia G Classic Base Brush and we're just going to see if this works at all as a contour. I think it will um, because like I said, it's meant to be a blush. So I think because it's cool toned, yeah, that's what I thought. Because it's cool toned, absolutely it works as a blush, but it also works as like a nice kind of contour shade for somebody with my skin tone. Um, for a deeper skin tone, I think this is, personally, I think this would disappear, uh, but if you're pale, it's cool enough and brown enough that it's cool enough. And I think it has, you know, a tone that actually works well as a bronzer because it's not too pink. Do you know what I mean? Like it doesn't look, it looks like blush definitely, but it has a tone to it that I think also works well as a subtle contour. So you could use it as a blush or you can use it as a contour. Now, again, blush can be contour. You know, you can use your blush as a contour. People have been doing that since forever. So they're not necessarily mutually exclusive, but I feel like uh, this will be like the shade that I use when I'm using Suku products as more of a contour slash blush. And I really, I like that. I think that looks really nice. It's very subtle. It's not, you know, it's not like the um, Charlotte Tilbury face palette, the Nude Gasm, which is much deeper on me. It's still light. Trust me, the Charlotte Tilbury one is still light, and I could totally get that. But because I'm so pale, it is deeper on me than this, this blush, which is the 129. All right, so let's use the Dior Limited Edition blush. Now, this is in 361, and it's... Mille Fiore. Mm -hmm. 
it is limited edition, but for Dior, right? We, you know, you know how these things work. But at least the good news is the right shade showed up on the site and the right thing was sent. It is really pretty. I will be doing swatch comparisons between this and Rose Montaigne and some of the other blushes because it does have a similar look to some of the other, you know, quote, rose pink blushes that are out there um, from Dior, but I'm gonna assume it has a somewhat, you know, different appearance. The embossing on it is beautiful, no doubt. I'm about to ruin it. But, you know, if you're gonna use your makeup, you're gonna ruin the embossing. That's just the way it is. All right. That's the shade. Now this one's light, which is interesting because most of the Dior blushes that I've used actually have a lot of pigment. And this one doesn't seem to, but it could be just because of the embossing. Oh no, it builds up, Never mind. <laughs> yeah, it's because I didn't really pull up enough of it. So it's still, it's still more pigment, but this one is lighter, less pigmented than practically all of the, at least so far, all the other blushes I've used from Dior. All right, so blush brush. We're gonna use the Sonia G Soft Cheek Brush. I'm gonna go in light today with this blush because I'm gonna be using the Westman Atelier on my eyes and I wanna keep the look kinda soft. Let's see. Oh, that's very pretty. It is lighter. I mean, just intensity wise. Most of the blushes that I've used by Dior have been much more pigmented. I know I've said that now three times, but really like this seems, and now I'm using a soft cheek brush, so I'm not going in with a denser brush. That's true, but usually I get more intensity of, of pigment than this from a Dior blush. So that's kind of interesting. I think it looks very pretty, but it's subtle. And if you're looking for something that is more intense, this might not be it. There's a scent to it as well. There seems to have, there is a little bit of um, sheen to it. It doesn't seem completely matte, but it's not, it's not in any way glittery at all. Well, at least mine isn't. All right, let's get into the highlighter, highlighting powder. So as I mentioned, this is not new, new, but this is new to me and it has been gone for quite some time. So there's a little teeny uh, brush that comes with it. A little Chanel brush, which is very cute. And it has its own little dust bag. And um, this powder is beautiful in its presentation. I'll let the camera, there we go. You can see there are two shades in here, more of a gold shade and more of a platinum shade. That's why it's called the Duo. And it is 0.3 ounces, 18 month shelf life, illuminating powder Duo. And it's just a beautiful powder. Um, the gold is very gold <laughs> and very pretty. And let me show you the other shade. They are both very smooth, beautiful illumination to these. Now you can use this all over the face. Today I'm just gonna use it as, as a highlighter and I'm gonna mix the two shades together and just put it up through um, this area. I would say to you that, like I said, this is a it's a really beautiful illumination. It actually has quite a bit to it. So if you're looking for something that's like more soft and diffused, like the kind of look I'm looking for today, I'm gonna use a very soft brush. So the brush I'm gonna use is the Chikahoto. This is the KZ05 highlighting brush. And I actually recently just picked up the, the KZ2 and 3 brushes backups. Uh, 
I got a notice that they were back in stock and it took me forever to get the two and threes in the first place. So I bought backups of them. So now I have backups in the twos and the, the two and three KZ brushes because these are really good. And they, I find them to be like some of my favorite brushes. So like I said, this is a very soft brush. Um, so you're gonna get more of that diffused look with this. But even then, it is a, it's a powerful <laughs> highlight. If this is something you're interested in picking up, it, like I said, it's a beautiful illuminating powder. I would suggest picking it up soon if it isn't sold out already, because the last time it was sold out, it was sold out for a really long time. So again, I'm not one of those people who's ever gonna tell you, like, you know, rush out and get something. But this is one of those products that, that was really gone for a really long time, and I don't know why. So I don't know if it's a supply chain thing. I don't know what's going on with it. This year has been odd. Anyway, so I really love this. Um, I love this powder. I love this illuminating powder. I use the whitish, more platinum one more often than the gold, but together they're beautiful. So I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer so you can see that, and also we're gonna get into the eye look. I think you can see how beautiful that is. I'm going to buff it out just a little bit just so that it blends a little bit more into the cheeks. But I mean, it's just, it's a stunning illuminator. Chanel did a really good job with it. I'm really happy with the look so far. It's uh, it's very soft and you know kind of a diffused look which is what I wanted for the Westman Atelier iPods. I haven't tried these yet so this is we're new new here guys but I have decided that the Louboutin and the Armani are going to wait for a different look because these two products first of all the Armani needs its own kind of thing and the Louboutin I have tried and it's even though it's um even though it's like the glow formula and not like a super matte formula, it's still, it's very bright. <laughs> so I think it actually is too much for the Western Atelier, even if this is very pigmented. Um, okay, so the three shades that come in here, we have Bon Chance, the Bisou, and Frappe. And this is the case that it comes in. And then these iPods, um, are these are the third yeah and there was Le Jouy, Le Nuit and now these are Rendezvous which I think is very cute and so there's three shades in here the um, Bisou which is in this like pinkish packaging we have Let's see, we have Frappe, which is in the gold. And then in this like platinum packaging, we have the Bon, bon Chance. And this is the shade, frankly, that made me buy this, which I know you guys will laugh at, but I, I love greens. As I said in my, my Charlotte Tilbury uh, video the other day, I love green shades. If there's like good green shades in a, in a set or a quad or a palette, I'm likely to pick it up just because there's a great green shade in there. And I understand there's like, you know, many, many other shades, but if there's a really good green shade in there, I'm probably gonna buy it. So if you haven't seen these before, they are magnetic. And so you can put them together like this and travel with them which is really convenient. It makes it really easy. Um, they're stackable. They stay together. It's, it's a really, you know, I really like, I like the way that these work. Westman Atelier is a clean beauty line created by Gucci Westman. And kind of the aesthetic is similar to, um, you know, a, a Chantecai or something along those lines. It is streamlined, simple, clean aesthetic and you know I would say in some ways like easy to do makeup um I guess is a good way to explain it I, I think that's simplifying things but you know you get the idea it's it's not 
17 shades in a palette. There's not like duochromes. These are what you might or I might consider an everyday look. Again, I understand everyone has a different definition, but it's something that I think multitudes could, you know, use easily. Um, so let's try the, the pinky shade. The only thing that I have, against, not against them, but the little pods are really, really cute. And I love the, the way they look. The aesthetic is beautiful. And I love that the fact they stack together. I just think it's great. But sometimes I get annoyed because you can't really like, because it's in there, you can't get your, like your finger in there. So it's a little hard to like, the brush fits fine, but my fingers, maybe just my fingers are fat. I don't know. So let's get the shade to swatch. Now the pinkish shade, these are very creamy, like super, super creamy. And I'm using, I'm destroying the pattern is the minute I touch it. Literally the minute I touch it. All right, so that's the pink shade, peach shade. Now let's do the green. That's the green. Good olive, some metallic there. I'll hold it up a little longer in just one second and let's get the satiny brown shade. Okay, those are the three shades. Okay, so these are described as a luminous eyeshadow trio, which provides soft definition and sumptuous finish using only the cleanest ingredients. Formulated with silky emollients for blendability, these shadows have a springy elastic texture, which I agree, and buildable payoff with zero fallout, intuitive and easy, as I was saying, they're just like a easy to use. Cream powder formula um, comes in three supremely wearable um, palettes, Les Jours, Les Nuits, and Rendezvous, which I mentioned before. No silicones, no parabens, no phthalates, no talc, no synthetic fragrances, no animal testing. So they do feel uh, really beautiful and they do feel like easy to blend. They feel softer than the other ones that I've used. That could just be me. I could just be imagining that, but they feel softer to me. But anyway, so let's go ahead and try them out. Um, I want to use a brush that works well. Oh, I know what I'll use. So with brushes like the, uh, with products like these, I like to use a brush that works well with cream products um, because it has this cream powder, you know, formula. I, you gotta be careful like which brushes that you use. So I'm gonna use this worker brush from Sonia G. This is her um, Lotus um, collection, which has the, the purple handles. But I think, and I think any like synthetic brush or um, you know, her fusion brushes will work, those types of things. But um, I think, well, let's see how this works on the eye, but these do look like they can build up. So let's use um, the brown shade first. They are super soft. You're gonna, you're gonna remove that little heart like immediately <laughs> as soon as you dig into these. Okay, let's try it on the eye. Oh yeah. Yeah, these feel much more pigmented, frankly, than the ones I've used before. I mean, maybe that's not true. Maybe they just seem like it, but these seem, I don't know. These seem creamier. I'll have to pull out the old ones and play around with them a little more, but they they do seem creamier to me than the, than the previous ones. Let's take the same shade, do that on the other eye. Easy to use, as I've mentioned. I mean, you don't get much easier than, you know, this type of formula and this type of look. Cause you, you can do these as one and done kind of shades. 
which I've done with the other iPods many a time. You just, you know, take those shades and use like one all over the eye. But these you can do like that, or you can, you know, do all the shades. I obviously will use all the shades today, but I can say right now, like I could take this shade, this, this brownie shade, use this to smoke out a look and then just use the light shade. Or I could just use the green all over the eye. I mean, there's lots of options. But it does seem to blend really well. Super easy. And that's actually pretty intense. I mean, for such a soft, it's, it's really soft. All right, let's take the green shade. I'm gonna use the same brush. And let's use it on the eyelid itself. And then I'm going to take the lightest shade and kind of use it as like an inner corner. I'm not going to do brow bone today because I'm still trying to stay away from my eyebrows. Even though there doesn't seem to be that much <laughs> pigment there right now. It's really interesting. I don't know if anything will be left by the time I go back. All right. Let's put this on the eye. You know, I have had friends who've had their eyebrows done who have told me, like, it does, it does, depending on, you know, your, your skin, um, it, it looks so much deeper in the beginning than it ends up looking, so that you want it to actually look like too much at, the, at first. So that could be the case. Like, maybe I just didn't, uh, I didn't do enough. Oh, that's a really pretty green. And it's... I mean, it's pretty big minute, actually. Definitely buildable. Wow, okay. I mean, it's a lot more pigment. This just seems a lot more pigmented than the other ones were. Maybe I'm just misremembering it. I guess that's possible. Um, all right, let's take a Wayne Goss number 16. I'm just gonna buff out this top part here, kind of make this a little smoother. I mean, I probably would take a lighter shade and kind of put it in the brow bone if I wasn't stay, staying away from my brows. But um, I don't think you need to because that blended out really easily. Hmm. Okay. Let's take the, the lighter shade, use it as an inner corner. All right, let's take that peach shade. Yeah, that would be a really pretty all over shade too, with just the brown. It's very light, but it's it's really nice. It's got some reflective properties to it. Um, let's go back in with the, the brown and see if we can just intensify. Yeah, you can go back in and smoke it out a little bit if you want to. Makes for a really easy look. I mean, let's take that green shade again and use that as a lower lash line shade. Yeah, it blends beautifully because it's so soft. Oh, it looks really nice. I'm gonna see how it works with my finger. I'm just gonna put my finger in the, the peach shade it feels like, like putty. Yeah, it doesn't really work as well with the finger, to be honest with you guys. It feels like putty. I think you need a brush. Interesting. Hmm. With the brush, I think it creates a great look. Again, really easy to use. Um, feels to me though like these are more pigmented, but I'm gonna have to play around with the old ones, pull them out and see, and do some swatch comparisons. But it looks great on the eye. I mean, it's a it's a simple, easy look, and even though these are more intense, they they still are very soft. I don't feel sticky on the eye or anything. I'm just 
Oh, I feel nice. Okay. All right, let me um, put on some mascara. I'll keep it still light. And then uh, we'll try the By Terry Lip Balm. All right, so we have some Chantecaille mascara on. And, you know, I, I really, really like the look. I think it looks really beautiful. It looks very soft. Uh, if my brows were where I wanted them to be, I think this look would be great. At the moment, my brows look a little sparse to me. But again, I can't put any makeup on them to fill them out because it's only been a week since I had them microbladed. Um, and there's not much there right now. I know I keep going on about it, but I'm just amazed at how like quickly it, the pigment just like disappeared. Uh, so anyway, I, I really like the look. It's very, it's very pretty. Um, the, the formula does seem a little different to me in the iPods, but maybe that's my imagination. It does seem, it does seem more pigmented and it seems softer, but you know, I need to play around with it a little bit more. This to me is very much that, you know, everyday look that we've talked about. Again, I know that it does depend on who you are when it comes to what an everyday look is, but that's what it feels like to me. The foundation I think is wearing well. I think it warmed up a little bit on my skin. I think it looks, um, I think it looks better than it did at first. I thought I was a little too light. And of course it could help that I have the blush and the contour on, but I do think it's a better match. The blush is really beautiful and I want to play around with it a little bit more and compare it to some of the other blushes I have by Dior, but it does seem less pigmented than the other Dior's that I have. All the Dior's that I have have been very pigmented and this one doesn't seem to be. I don't know if I just haven't like it's just, you know, a surface thing and I haven't played with it enough or what, but it does seem a lot softer and less pigmented than the other Dior's. Now it could just be this particular shade. That's entirely possible. And for me, it works fine. It looks great. Um, the 129 in Suku makes a really good contour for me. I think it'll look pretty as just a blush as well, but it's also a really good contour because you know, it's got that cool toned kind of um, mocha kind of color. Um, the highlighter, I love this duo highlighter. I'm very glad that it finally came back in stock. So the next thing we're gonna try and the last thing we're gonna try, this is the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydro Balm Ultra Care Lipstick. This is in Secret Kiss. I think these are new, pretty sure. Um, shade five, let me show you on my hand. Let's try them out. Oh, that's like super soft. Interesting. They have a scent. So this is what they look like. And if they're not new to the market, they are definitely new to me. They have that feel that the Gucci lipsticks have, that very glossy, balmy feel, which I mean makes sense because they are a ultra care lipstick, a hydrating, plumping, sheer and shine lipstick. They feel really good. That feels really, that feels really nice. Uh, and this is in Secret Kiss, which I really love the shade. It's a great shade. Yeah, it feels really good on the lips. It's, it's good for this look. It's very, uh, you know, it's not too much. It's not too opaque. It's definitely, it's got some shade to it. It definitely has some depth to it, but I would get, it's more of a, you know, a liquidy balm. Yeah, it feels really good on the lips. I'm gonna have to wear it a while. I don't think this is gonna last long. It doesn't feel like something that's gonna last on the lips, but I don't think that's what they were going for. Interesting, okay. It feels like their um, Balm de Rose, you know, the one that's in the pot, but it also, they also have it in the wand which i love and i use all the time that's what it feels like okay so we have the whole look pulled together 
all newness. And I'd say two things. I'm obviously missing a bronzer because I look very, very pale. But I didn't want to pull anything in today that wasn't new because literally this is all new to me. And I don't have a new bronzer. Because I haven't seen any new bronzers lately that I've wanted to pick up. I don't think I've even seen any new bronzers introduced. Maybe I missed something, but I haven't seen any. Uh, so the Westman Atelier, as I said, I really do like it. If you have the others, you're probably going to like this one. It does seem creamier to me, but I will play around with the others and do some comparisons. The formula is very creamy. It feels like putty. That's what it feels like. And I definitely think a brush is better. The, my fingertips don't really pick it up very well because it is that putty kind of feel. Um, but it, it creates a very soft, very nice look on the eye. The foundation I'm going to have to wear for a while, but so far it actually looks pretty good on the skin and it didn't do any of the weirdness that the original Gucci did. So right there, that's that's a win. Um, like I said, the blush is beautiful, but it does seem, does seem light. And the powder, this powder is not new, but I have to say guys, it's just, um, it's a really stunning illuminator. And if you haven't used it and you're looking for something like, you know, an illumination powder that's has like some different shades in it. Um, this one you can do a little cooler, or a little warmer depending. And it really is, you know, quite beautiful. Um, the pattern is gorgeous as well, but you know, that's going to be gone. <laughs> um, anyway, and then this by Terry Balm feels really good on the lips, but I will admit it's probably a lot to spend for a balm. But if you're the kind of person who loves balms like I do, and you know, you want something that has some color to it, this might be a good choice. I'm going to wear it around for a while. Obviously, like I said, this is all new, new. So, you know, these are just first impressions, but so far, so good. I will definitely have a video with the Louboutin and the Armani soon, and there's a lot more coming. So this is, this is a really nice look though for like, for me, for like an everyday kind of thing. If I'm, you know, running around or, or for work, I think it's, it's really nice. And I, you know, like I said, I need a bronzer, but other than that. So thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I hope, I hope to see you in another video really soon.